Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And I'm feeling a little better today, so I'm going to speak a little bit more about that favorite topic of mine. Yes, you guessed it. It's all about number. But again, a different perspective, I'll have you know. And one that will help you to understand more about numbers. So without rambling on, let's begin. Okay, so uh, I've talked a lot about geometric arithmetic and algebraic arithmetic. And of course, uh, geometric arithmetic is always exact. It doesn't really matter whether you're taking a quotient or a product or addition or subtraction. The result is always precise. There is no approximation. Now, in order to understand what I'm saying, you first have to realize that given any two angles in a circle, as you see here, um, they're subtended on this same arc. These angles are equal in the orange, <coughs> and the gray angles are equal. And <clears throat> therefore, and also these angles are equal. Therefore, these two triangles, this one and this one, are similar. Okay? You'll have to bear with me because I still have laryngitis, so I'm struggling to talk. Now, an interesting thing is that the product of this blue line and this dark blue line, in other words, the length, the product of the length of these lines is always the red line, okay? So in geometry, <clears throat> we always have this proportion here, which results in <clears throat> this uh, identity that you see on the right. Now, I could simply write this as the blue line multiplied by the light blue line without dividing it if I accept that this black line here is the unit, okay? So I could take this part away and rewrite it <clears throat> as just the top part here if the black line is the chosen unit. So now, <clears throat> if I wanted to choose, let's say, uh, a different unit, say that unit, okay? And I expanded this like so. Then this line here would still be the product of these two lines. So if, for example, we have two times three, let's, let's do this. Let's say, let's choose that one, this length as a distance, go to algebraic, okay? And let's say that we have two times three, that will give us six, right? But now if I chose a different unit, this unit here, and scaled up, <clears throat> like so, then which is the real product? Is it the one that I used with this two as a unit or this unit here, right? Which is the real product? Can you tell me? <clears throat> well, as you can see, it doesn't <clears throat> really make a difference, okay? It doesn't make a difference. Uh, which one I choose as a unit when it comes to measuring the product itself, okay? Because what happens with the product is that we use the same technique, but we don't care about the size of the unit. Because if the measurement is correct, we can always add the unit after the measurement, right? Does that make sense? So if we wanted to have, let's say, pi, which is approximately 3.14, we can increase the rounding here. Let's make it to four places. So if we do that, 3.14, somewhere there, right? Okay, let's say about that much, right? And 
let's make the square root of 2 about 1.4. Somewhere there, right? We could get these exact values. Uh, for example, pi, we can get by going to Archimedes' works, which uh, has propositions 18 and 19. In proposition 18, you can uh, construct pi as a circumference of this first circle. So this length OB, OB, where it meets a tangent at A, will be pi. So you could construct it theoretically like that, not with a compass and straight edge, but that doesn't mean anything. Compass and straight edge are only means of communicating the perfect ideas in mathematics, okay? And of course, to get the square root is very easy, isn't it? All you do is you uh, construct a triangle with sides one each, and that length there is the square root, okay? So you don't have to construct it physically, only if it can be done uh, theoretically. In other words, using well-formed concepts, okay? Then again, here we, we still have a dilemma because which is the real product of square root 2 and pi? Will it be this one using this one unit or using a different unit, okay? And now that poses a dilemma doesn't it because in order in order to see first of all if we have other similar triangles note that it doesn't it's only special in this case that this product will give the red line so if i had this similar triangle here that i'm pointing to the product of these wouldn't be this red line here they have to lie these three points have to be concentric they have to lie in the circumference of a circle all right, so now we have a dilemma, right? And the dilemma says, what is the real pi times square root 2? Well, that dilemma is very easy to resolve if we use an abstract unit. But this is where the algebraic arithmetic is no longer exact, okay? it's You can no longer say in algebra, in fact, you never talk about exact values in algebra because algebraic arithmetic is always abstract. In other words, you're always using the abstract unit. It's very important for you to understand this in order to understand what it means to be a number, okay? Because in geometry, we refer to these numbers by the line segments. <clears throat> now, if we had a special... A way to represent mass or area or something else, then we could refer to those magnitudes in a special way. But when we talk about algebra, we can refer to all those different magnitudes using a standard measure. In other words, uh, a measure that describes each of the magnitudes by attempting to measure them in terms of a unit and in this case an abstract unit <clears throat> remember we don't care too much about the abstract unit so what really happens here is that we start off with the physical and then we go to the metaphysical or the perfect form which is the abstract unit and anytime we want to let's say create a special disk obviously uh, the pi on each of those disks will be represented by different ratios because they have different circumferences and different diameters. But the measure of pi will be the same for those two disks. Do you understand that? The measure of pi will be the same for those two disks. <clears throat> now, this applies to everything in science, and we've never used anything but rational numbers. So this is how we resolve this dilemma. We say, okay, we're going to use an abstract unit, and algebra is a weak form of geometry. Okay, so using the abstract unit, all we can do when it comes to incommensurable magnitudes is to represent them in an approximate form. So, for example, pi is represented as 3.14159. 
okay, which is a rational number, right? Nothing else but a rational number. And this is how <clears throat> we represent these magnitudes. So I hope I've been able to give you yet another perspective between the connection. Uh, uh, let me rephrase that. To give you another perspective of the connection between geometry and algebra. And this is the connection, okay? So there is no actual uh, exact square root 2 or exact pi in geometry. Because pi, if I alter the unit, it will still be pi, but it's not, its measurement is the same, but the distance of the line segments are no longer the same. All right? So <clears throat> ultimately, algebra is a weak form of geometry because in geometry we can find out exactly the product of two line segment lengths but not so in algebra well i encourage you now to download my free ebook which has a lot of uh, topics in it also to visit my linkedin site in where wherein i have a lot of articles like for example articles like this as 18 likes and eight comments. So people are beginning to see. Uh, and a lot of these uh, individuals are PhDs, okay? So here's a PhD here. And some of them are, are professors of mathematics and what have you. So people are beginning to wake up. It's very slow. And I doubt that in my lifetime, this will become common knowledge, but at some time it will. So I'll place links to these in the details section, but be sure to download <clears throat> the most important mathematics book ever written, which is my free ebook. Okay. And I'll place the links in the details section. Well, I'm totally out of breath now, and I think my voice has gone even worse. So I'm going to stop here and hope I've given you a different perspective. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. Till next time, friends, goodbye.